This video discusses the concept behind a generic change of variables. We have seen it before when we were trying to prove why there is an R in the converting of dA uh, into uh, polar. We go with R dr d theta. And then we saw it again when we convert in 3D coordinate system from Cartesian into spherical we saw that the dv becomes rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. Generically, what's going on is you're mapping from one space to another. You have the xy space called s, and the uv space is called r. And if you have some region that is closed and bounded, then when you map it, it will be closed and bounded, provided that some things are going to be true. This mapping T that takes you from XY space into UV space will have an either an amplification or a shrink factor when it comes to area. The area on the left might not exactly equal the area on the right. When you map a clones of bounded region, it's possible that the area could be amplified, and this section studies how to calculate that amplification factor. It's called the Jacobian, and what you do is you have your equations that connect your two spaces. You have what x and y are in terms of u and v, the equations that convert u from one to the other. And then what you do with those equations is you take partial derivatives. And so if x is equal to some function f, who is of u and v, we take its u partial and its v partial. Those become entries in the first row. Uh, this is just a tool. This 2 by 2 matrix is just a tool to help you um, figure out what the Jacobian is. It doesn't have to be put in this format. Um, and then we have that y is a function g of u and v. And we take the partial with respect to u and v. And that becomes row 2 of the Jacobian. And if there was a third variable, we'd have a third row. It'd be a 3 by 3 to determinant that you're calculating. These bars indicate a determinant where you multiply along the diagonals and subtract in 2 by 2. And so this product, the x is u partial times y is v partial, from that we subtract x is v partial times y is, well, y is u partial. Now this could be negative and so um, when, we, when we do this transformation we want to make sure that um, area is going to be not multiplied by a negative factor and so what we do is we put absolute value bars around the Jacobian. So when it's time to change dA, an element of area, uh, in xy space is called dx dy but in uv space you can't just switch it to du dv. There's the amplification factor called the Jacobian and um, we take the absolute value of that Jacobian Provided that some things are true, of course, these functions f and g, which are your transformation functions, they have to be con they have to have continuous first partial derivatives for you to even, you know be able to take them, um, and then the mapping needs to be one to one, meaning that um, the, there's an inverse map that uh, can take you back from u v space into x y space, and we need that inverse map um, to exist, and so the mapping T being one to one would tell us then we had this inverse mapping that'll take us back. Um, the, these R and S regions, they must uh, consist of piecewise smooth, simple closed curves and the interior. So it's not just any random uh, region, it has to be a closed, um, simple closed curve and uh, the interior included. Um, the Jacobian. Um, doesn't vanish, so we don't need that. We won't. Uh, we can't have that equal to zero. And uh, when we go to transform the double integral, then we trade in all the x's for the f function. We trade in all the y's for the g function. Every place we see an x, we put the f function. Every place we see it y, we put the g function. And then we uh, put in this Jacobian. And and so that is the concept of changing variables generically. And now we're going to see. Um, a couple examples where um, the transformation is a rather simple one. Let's see the first one. So we have 
this integral in xy space, which we can't do in its current format. We have e to the x plus y, and that's times the cube root of x minus y. Now the region, though, is bounded by four lines, uh, two sets of parallel lines. We have x plus y equals 0, and x plus y equals 1, and then x minus y equals 0, and x minus y equals 8. Plotting those lines, we have this strange to deal with an xy space we have this uh, s region here it's a parallelogram the blue line is x minus y uh, x x minus y equals 0 the red line is x minus y equals 8 um, the yellow line is x plus y equals 0 and the green line is x plus y equals 1 <laughs> okay great so what are we going to do with this? We cannot do this in xy space. For the region's sake, for the integrand's sake, we need to convert. And there is a pretty straightforward conversion that would do everything for you. Take care of the issue of this parallelogram region being converted into a much simpler region in, in UV space. And then this integrand, x plus y showing up and x minus y showing up. We're just going to replace those with generic variables u and v. And what's nice is this region then becomes uh, a rectangular region. If I let x plus y be equal to u and x minus y be equal to v, then I have exactly the fact that u is going to go from 0 to 8 and v is going to go, um, v is going to go from 0 to 8 and u is going to go from 0 to 1. And integrating a rectangular region is very nice. All the bounds are numerical. And so, the region now has been simplified. The integrand is simplified. Now, don't forget, we have to consider the Jacobian. And so, the Jacobian is the x partials with respect to u and v, and the y partials with respect to u and v. We don't have that. We have u in terms of x and y. We have two options. We can get, you know, with this, everything being nice and linear like this, we can solve for x in terms of u and v. Okay, we can solve for x and y, if that's possible. It's very possible here. And the other option is to use the inverse transformation. What happens is that um, the Jacobian will be... Um, for the t transformation from xy space into uv space, the, but the t inverse transformation is from uv space back into xy space. And what happens if you follow one by the other, you should get back, you know, if you amplify by a factor of two, then going backwards, you'll shrink by a factor of a half. Things should be balanced out to be back how they were before. And so because of this fact, then the Jacobians are just uh, reciprocals of each other. And so the Jacobian that we need is uh, in terms of u and v partials and so uh, we don't have that and so on the next um, video I'll explore part b today in this one we'll explore part uh, a where we add these two equations together what's nicely what's nice about that is the y's cancel and we can divide by two to say that x is half of u plus v half of u and half of v and when you distribute uh, we can subtract the equations and, the, and then the x's would cancel. And we have double y is u minus v. So divide by 2. So therefore, we have the equations in the, in the right order. We have x in terms of u and v and y in terms of u and v. And we can take these partials. What is the partial of x with respect to u? It's just a half. We actually, we just get these coefficients. A half and a half for the x and uh, x partial with u and x partial with v. And then a half and negative a half for the y partials. We multiply, we get a negative fourth, and we come back with a negative fourth. So we put these together, and the Jacobian is a negative half. Okay, now let's go back to the integral, who is going to be converted now to be e to the u and the cube root of v. When it comes to Jacobian, we need absolute value bars, so that negative a half will then be converted to be a half the bounds well we know that u goes between 0 and 1 and v goes between 0 and 8 and this is a nice simple integral 
in fact I believe it's separable you could do two separate um, integrals whenever you have numerical bounds and the integrand can be written as a product of um, functions that are single variable then you could separate but let's just go ahead and integrate out u first so uh, e to the u is antiderivatives e to the u and pull the half out uh, put the 1 in and put the 0 in so e to the 1 minus e to the 0 and that'll give you just e minus 1 pull that out with the half when you integrate v to the 1 -third, you get v to the 4 thirds but times 3 fourths and then we'll put in the 8 and we put in the 0 the 0 will give us 0 but when we put in the 8 we have to deal with 8 to the 4 thirds but 8 is a perfect cube when you have a, a fractional exponent like this you take the cube root first and then you take it to the fourth power and so that'll be 2 the cube root of 8 is 2 and that to the fourth is 16 and so then what, what can happen is that 16 can cancel with the 8 so this guy is a 16 and then it can cancel with the 8 to turn into a 2 and so our final answer to this question is 6 times the quantity of e minus 1 on the next video I do a very similar question but I do it using part B, the inverse transformation. Thank you.